The word brachiate comes from the Latin words brachium, which means arm, and eight, which means separate. Brachiation is technically classed as a form of locomotion, so essentially, brachiation is a form of travel using our arms one at a time, which is something I think most, if not all of us, have tried at some point during our childhood on the playground classic, the monkey bars. When done correctly and with confidence, flowing through the air hand over hand is an absolute joy for the body to experience. And though at first glance it may appear as though you need to be as strong as a chimp in order to swing on the fingertips of one hand, I hope to show that there is a lot more technique involved and that by applying simple physics you can mitigate the strength required and shrink the barrier to brachiate for everyone. The most common place to start with monkey bars is by moving one bar for every two steps. It's a perfectly normal place to begin and your first few rounds may look just like this. But you can see that it looks kind of awkward. There's no flow. The hips are directly below the hands the whole time, so there's a lot of weight pulling directly down. So every time you let go of one bar, you have to make a very fast grab to the next before gravity pulls you off. There is zero flow of momentum. The next step up from this would be to go hand over hand, one bar at a time, like so. Now you can see there's a little more fluid action, and at least now there's a repetitive pattern happening. But because the steps are so small, my hips are still right below my hands, and in order to swing in such a small space, they're actually swaying more side to side than back to front. Again though, this is a perfectly natural stage of progression, and you may need to do it a few times to build confidence, and that's totally fine. Do it as much as you need, but for me, the fun starts in the next step. When you feel ready, and I feel it's perfectly fine for many of you to start here, I want you to get up on the monkey bars, two hands on one bar, and then when you're at your peak of the swing at the front, let go with one hand, and grab the bar a little bit further out. For me, I'm basically skipping one bar, but of course it depends on how big the gaps are between rungs on your set. You may be in a gym setting, in which case your setup may look something like this. Basically, you want the gap to be roughly somewhere about two hip widths apart, and you'll see why in a second. Now once you've got a hold of that second bar, I want you to practice just swinging side to side like this. And now is when we discover the key to the monkey bars. The key to the monkey bars is all in the hips. When you have enough horizontal distance between each hand, the hips become unlocked, and we have access to play with the physics that make brachiation so fun. As you swing back and forth, you'll see it's a combination of slightly bending the arm and pulling down with the lat, but it's mostly in lifting your hips. Basically, we're using all the lateral muscles of the body. Notice how effortless you can swing back and forth and the slight weightlessness you feel at the top of each swing. Just to test this, have a try with briefly letting go with the hip side hand at the top of each swing. You can see when my hands are closer together how much less control I have over my swing. This is because the only time I'm able to control my hips is when they're in between my two hands, which act as anchors. And the further apart those anchors are, the more precise my control will be, up until a point. From here then, if you want to carry on, the safest way is at the back of the swing let go with the back hand, and then you can either match on the front bar like so, or you can swing past and catch the next bar the same distance away on the other side, like this. Now, there will be some force going through the fixed hand here, so make sure you are confident. Overgrip the bar as much as possible, and try to keep the body long and taut, like a pendulum, so there's no jolt of weight suddenly appearing in that hand. The most common mistake people make is not keeping the body long, and letting the hips swing through, and so a jolt of weight suddenly appears in the hand and they ping off. If you don't feel confident, then I would recommend drilling the side to side swing, going through the grip session once or twice a week, and playing with monkey bars at the level you do feel comfortable with until your confidence builds. If you do feel confident, then feel free to cut loose and traverse the length of the monkey bars or whatever setup you have in this manner. Other keys to think about when doing it. Notice that my hips turn 180 degrees with every swing. They only point forwards as they come through the middle. Also notice that my swinging arm comes down and around to keep me long. Another great conditioning exercise for the monkey bars that I absolutely love is to do them in this 100% controlled manner using zero swing, like this. You see I place my hips and therefore my center of mass directly below the front hand before letting go with my back hand so that zero swing happens in my body when I release the backhand. Then I lower, rotate 180 degrees before pulling back up to grab the next bar. This final pull up to grab is the hardest part 
and you may want to use a little swing in the beginning to do it, while you develop the strength and understanding in the body of what muscles work to make it happen. Step four. Often I find that just when I get going with the monkey bars, they come to an end. So here is a neat 180 degree turn you can try to fluidly change direction. As you get to the end, at the peak of the backswing, swiftly let go with the backhand, turn it around and re-grab the bar like so. Then, as your hips raise forwards, simply let go of the front hand and now turn around and start swinging in the other direction. The chef's kiss on the monkey bars and when you really want to crank it is to add a heel flick to the back of the swing. Or, for extra speed, you can even time the heel flick early so that by the time you grab, you're already ready to kick through to the next swing. And the final form of brachiation is done much like when chaining lashes together. You almost stop the hips in space and pivot the upper body over the top so that as soon as you catch the next bar, your hips and therefore your center of mass are behind the grabbing bar and therefore in the perfect place to send you straight into the next swing with no time wasted. It's an incredibly fun movement to experience and the most gibbon-like. The only thing for this is that you need a good decent sized gap between the bars, one that's longer than your wingspan in order to try it, with space for your head to come higher than your hands, which just isn't possible on a traditional monkey bar setup with short gaps. A CrossFit box, a calisthenics park or a parkour park might be your best bets to find one. There are also other forms of brachiation to play with, like this contralateral version that I call the running man. 360 spins like this, or this horizontal bar brachiation technique. The biggest limiter on my brachiation practice has been the time it takes to toughen the skin on my hands. You may build calluses, and I have had some skin tears, but they heal pretty quickly, and over time, the skin on your hands becomes more durable. You just have to be patient and practice taking care of them, using the tools mentioned elsewhere in this course. I know that may not sound fun, but all I can say is that it's been incredibly worth it. I think monkey bars are the single most undervalued functional training tool and movement skill in the fitness industry and in the movement culture today. It builds well-balanced grip, upper body and core strength. It teaches us to coordinate and the value of center of mass positioning and how to maximize physics for fun. Brachiation is a form of locomotion that is in our DNA. Awaken it.